Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Human Role. Um, this is our new podcast. My name is Tiana Neal and my co-host here, Chris Wood. Um, our podcast is going to be focused mostly um, within the HR and payroll um, world and industry. I'm just talking about current hot topics that are going on. And um, of course, as time goes on, we'll get your insight. Um, we have, do have, you know, future um, list of what's to come, but of course that could be ever changing just depending on the industry and what is going on currently at that moment. For now, we will um, launch a new episode every single month on a monthly basis. That could change, you know, longer down the line, but right now we'll keep it consistent on a monthly basis. Um, and as we get started, we'd like to just um, start off with some brief introductions of ourselves for those of you who don't know us. So I'll get it, go ahead and get started. My name is uh, Tiana Neal. Um, I started my career and went into ADP um, where I learned lots of things within the payroll world. So payroll um, ins and outs of processing, optimization, um, implementation, all that good stuff. Um, after my career at ADP, I went on to work at a school district where I helped them move from um, manual processes to automation. Um, and then after that, found myself in um, the fast fashion e-commerce industry as an HR operations manager. So I handled HR, HRIS benefits um, as well. And then from that stance, currently where I'm at now, I work for a consulting firm. I'm the director of client success at Enhance HCM. I manage um, our payroll benefits, HR and tax consultants, as well as overseeing all client engagements. So along with that, our firm um, at Enhance HCM, we provide interim support for many clients that need support around payroll, HR, benefits, tax and project management management is also a biggie. So if you all need any type of support for that down the line, feel free to send me a message or um, go to our website and submit an online submission. Um, and from there, I'll, Chris, I'll let you um, do your intro. Actually, Tian and I have a similar uh, educational background. Uh, we both focused on communications. Um, I was into broadcasting, picked up some freelance journalism jobs after college. But like a lot of people needed that nine to five job for things like rent and car and paying student loans the occasional adult beverage and so forth. And like many people that I talked to in the payroll industry, I've heard them say, you know, I didn't find payroll, it found me. And so my first job in the industry, uh, I gained a greater understanding of the subject, how it really affects all of us in some way, despite sometimes not realizing. Uh, and now I get to write about payroll and other related topics. Uh, I work with a wonderful New York Metro chapter of Payroll Org, and I meet some great people on HR and payroll. Uh, writing an article for Paypack Magazine uh, is actually how Tiana and I met. Uh, I interviewed her <laughs> uh, for an article about HR trends in 2023 and another on earned wage access. And her insight was just incredible. And so the rest is history. And Tiana, uh, will you get us rolling uh, with our first topic? First topic of the month is going to be, of course, artificial intelligence. Um, so I'm <laughs> sure if you have been paying any attention to the news in any way, shape or form, AI is, of course, starting to take over many industries right currently at the moment and um although it's newer to us it's definitely you know behind the scenes been um, being worked on for many years especially around like the tech side of things and so i think from from our stance here we really just want to provide some insight on what we heard right so as chris and i have both attended different conferences over the last couple of months and also kind of just keeping up with separate um, other articles and doing our own research um, we are you know seeing there's a bit of a um, a mix of feelings here where some people are excited about it some people not so much and you know i think from our stance um whether you're fearful whether you think it's going to take over your job whether you're happy or just intrigued by it um i think this is a good way for us to kind of start this conversation and really take a more of a um dive into what we've seen so far right and how we feel like it will um affect our industry of course things are ever changing every single day so um that could be different what we're talking about today could be definitely different you know a month from now you know 60 90 days from now um, but we are going to 
really start speaking on what we've um, heard so far and what how we feel like things will transpire um, in the future. So with that being said, let's, you know, Chris, let's jump right in. I, you, I mean, from our stance, I think we'd like to just give a little bit of history of how AI even came about. Although it's in the news now, it's been cooking for many, many years, I would say, <laughs> quite some time. So um, Chris, I'll let you take it back and maybe just provide some insight on the history. Um, and then from there, we'll kind of step back in and focus more on our specific industry and you know how um, how it's going to affect us long term yeah absolutely very well said uh, tiana and um you know in both of us looking at this history of ai it, it it kind of can go all the way back to the concept of philosophers talking about automatons and mechanical men and could they exist and so forth um but instead of going all the way back to maybe like greek or roman times uh, we can just combine a little knowledge with a little pop culture and something I found uh, has to do with the British scientist Alan Turing and his 1950s paper titled Computer Machinery Intelligence uh, is one of the first modern concepts of AI. The paper proposed this test of uh, machine intelligence and it's called the imitation game. Uh, so in, in some ways, AI is the idea of computers imitating humans, uh, more specifically performing functions that humans typically do. And then there was an AI boom in the 1980s. Uh, and now it seems like businesses have jumped into this next generation AI with both feet. As Tiana was uh, was alluding to before, um, you see this in, in multiple different areas of business. And today we're going to focus a bit more on payroll and HR. I was reading this article called The Last Frontier of Distru uh, Disruption, and it talked about EI's AI chatbot. So EI, formerly Ernst & Young. Um, and it actually failed the CPA exam uh, when it first took it, but now it has since passed it. So the article talks about the complexity of payroll, employees having difficult time getting answers, particularly when it comes to global organizations. Uh, the article notes that there have been limited investment in payroll over the last 20 years due to the complexities of compliance and so forth. The article did say that maybe there's been a bit more investment in human capital uh, management systems. So maybe Tiana, I don't know if you wanted to start off to talk about from a historical point of view now up to where we are and looking at these two industries, do you see HC uh, M systems starting to implement AI and and some of the feedback you're you're hearing about. Yeah, absolutely. So I will say, I mean, look, if you've been in the payroll industry and payroll world, I spent my career in that in that side of the house. So in almost every company, right? Payroll is not, you know, typically looked at um, or really what Chris alluded to, not typically invested in, right? So you typically have your payroll person, whether that's a payroll manager, and usually there's a discussion going on on whether or not payroll should report to accounting or to HR, right? That is very, a very common question that comes up. And I think from our stance, um, we typically in the payroll world aren't, we're not necessarily like frowned upon, but we're not what I like to describe bringing in the bacon per se. So, you know, we're, we're keeping the bacon running, but we're not bringing it in. So I think from, you know, from my stance, there has not been a heavy investment. And I'm sure um, many payroll people can relate to being asked the question, um, you just click the button, right? And there's so much more that goes into payroll. And typically it takes a company, unfortunately, you know, to lose a payroll person um, to actually really realize of how much has been occurring. And I think from a payroll stance, we have, you know, we typically, as we're going through our day to day, I know I've, um, also felt this way many times where you don't even realize that you're doing so much because it just becomes second nature to what you're doing right so then when you have to train someone you're like oh yeah oh yeah this oh, oh yeah actually do this too you know and so i think from the ai perspective from what i'm seeing here is that what tasks can the system automate and help make more seamless and really enhance, right? So that your day-to-day -day where there could be a lot of manual tracking, right? When it becomes the end of the quarter, and you know if you have time you're reviewing your quarterly documents when it comes to year end and you're having to take on hundreds of thousands of you know w2s real right and making sure that those are good to go what pieces in the system can ai handle from a manual stance to alleviate more time right out of your um, out of your day that's for right now from what we're seeing is where the investments are occurring so a, a conference that i was recently at um, and I'm really interested to see this um, as we go into open enrollment, but 
from what has what's being worked on right now is that there are some platforms where they are looking to enhance like benefit modules. So for example, right now, if you handle benefits within your company, typically in a system, you have to build out the plan setup. So if you change your plans throughout the year, when the rates go through, when those types of changes happen, you have to go in and manually update that in, into your system, um, whether it's creating new plans, turning off the old plans, changing all the rates, making sure the deductions are coded properly. Um, from what is being explained is that now the system, all you would have to do is go into the system and upload your BRD, so your benefits review document um, that is given to you by your broker, and the AI system is supposed to automatically read that and make the plans for you, right? So it, it seems like that manual process is going to be going away at some point. And so that part I'm interested in, I'm still skeptical. I think as most, you know, payroll people can relate. I mean, I, I can't explain how many times we have probably trusted a system, um, how many times things have worked every single pay period in that one payroll where you get increases late, you get bonuses late, um, you know, it just happens to be on the worst week ever, right? And so something that has always gone right, or, you know, you're told the system is gonna do something, and, you know, just that one time, you let your guard down a little bit, and then on payroll Friday or Thursday, um, it's like, oopsie, you know, actually, you know, that didn't happen that way. And so I think from my end, um, I'm a skeptic, just like I'm sure many of you are, um, but also, I think, um, interested in seeing how this will plan out. And then from that perspective, really just how we can um, better market ourselves, right? And better enhance ourselves in our own experience, right? And what the next level is, you know, for our own career. Yeah, I agree. It's well said. And something you were talking about a little bit more about, you know, businesses appear to be on board. There was a Paychex uh, annual Pulse of HR report for 2023, and it found that more than 75% of HR leaders at companies with 20 or more employees they plan to use AI in the next 12 months. This is something that, as we were talking about a little earlier, if you're a little concerned, you're wondering, is this a job replacement? Is it a job enhancement? Is it undecided at the moment? I think we might find out down the road. Uh, it could be some hype to it, or everybody's just trying to get on board and catch up because this next generation tech has come out and people are thinking, well, where can I implement this, particularly in HR and payroll, as we're talking about. But I thought it was an interesting, um, but maybe a positive uh, statement that AI, it's, it, it may not be the replacement, it's the enhancement that helps the business and its employees from different angles, including the employee experience. And there was something else that was on my radar on this topic. Uh, it was talking about Google Cloud and UKG also embracing AI about the employee experience. Uh, they plan to use technology, technologies to streamline important but common processes, improve the day-to-day -day experience of employees, uh, AI, AI powered analytics, real-time recommendations, uh, proactive reminders, uh, payroll anomaly detections. So these things could be benefits. They could be tools that help a payroll provider or a, a human resources provider um, with their current day to day. And maybe that frees them up for a little bit more time as, as you were talking about earlier with Kiana with payroll not having necessarily uh, the biggest seat at the table, let's say. And maybe that helps them, you know, COVID-19 I think helped a lot of people understand that, hey, payroll is a pretty big deal with these tax credits and how to apply for them and report them. And if errors and compliance happens, worker classification and things of that nature, these can be very costly to a company. So if you've got your HR and payroll people in a position to forecast and look forward and say, hey, I think you could save money here. And they may have more time to do that if these tools you know, can take care of some of the other things that maybe are a bit time consuming. Yeah, yeah, I'll chime in there too, because those were um, some good points, Chris. And I think also what the article um, alluded to was the pandemic, right? And I think that definitely changed the game. I mean, even some of the articles that I'm seeing with the IRS funding, right, and how they're even starting to change their process, which has been, you know, very old school for quite some time. Um, I, I, the pandemic definitely opened a lot of people's eyes. With the chat boxes or chat GPT, maybe at some point answering some of those, um, you know, one-off questions that employees may have in regards to their paychecks or just in general of the company's policy. If you're not on site anymore, you know, then what do you do? Do you send an email and then you have to wait? What if you're 
urgently, you know, waiting for something or need an urgent document filled out, you know, or do you pick up the phone and call? And if that person isn't available, of course, if people are in different states, there's different time zones, right? So if you're on the East Coast and it's nine, ten o'clock your time and your person, you know, your payroll person or payroll manager is on the West Coast, right? Nine times out of ten, they're not gonna answer a call at six o'clock in the morning, right? Or respond to your email right away. Those things are what I believe my assumption is that I believe that they are, you know, going, trying to help with that process, um, just so that employees can get um, answers quicker. Um, mm. But I will say too, I mean, look, I, even with that, those questions being taken off your plate, there is still a human layer. I think Chris and I will get into more of that in a little bit, right? To where as I just mentioned, company policies, right? How is that built in to your chat GPT, right? And that is going to then change your job and your role a little bit, right? Instead of answering the employee's questions, maybe you're filling out questions and helping the chat answer the questions accordingly based on your company plans and company policies. And so that's just a different, you know, that's a, an example of just kind of how your role will be different, but still the same, you know, but just a little bit different way of going about things. And I, and I saw this uh, another article. We were, we've been reading a lot about this subject recently because it's been everywhere in the news. And there was one person who was talking about how, you know, one assessment of the impact of AI uh, that 80% of jobs today could you know, include one or more tasks that can be done by AI. And kind of to make it not sound so drastic, to put it in a different context, that's saying, you know, this doesn't mean that most jobs are at risk of being automated, but that some tasks and 80% of jobs can be done differently. Um, and that still could be, you know, a reason for caution. I know, you know, not in our respective industries that we have seen, but we've seen people, I think there was a former, uh, Google, uh, executive or employee I was reading about, yeah. uh, he quit his job to warn about the dangers of development in this field, trying to say, let's not get out over our skis. And there was someone who I was speaking to at Ceridian, a VP during, uh, payroll orgs Congress, uh, back in May in Denver. And she referred to it as kind of a gradual evolution. So sort of like, let's see, it's almost like, you know, does a square peg fit in a square hole? Does it round? <laughs> and like, let's see where this technology can work. So it doesn't make people feel like they're replaceable, uh, but more say, how can it help them in their role? And then how can that in turn help the company? Um, maybe uh, optimistic in that end and seeing where that goes. But right now there, there, is, there is a bit of hype, you know, coming around this next generation technology. So it's something that we'll definitely monitor, keep track of. Um, but also the government as well is kind of hopping in. And um, I think the Senate had some hearings recently talking about AI, um, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission had some guidance out. And there's something I think, Tiana, if you wanted to, to hop in, there was a, a blog post we were looking at, uh, and it actually uh, from a law firm that was actually asking ChatGPT, like, what are some of the risks in using you? <laughs> and I thought it had some interesting answers. Yeah, I think, um, look, it, I, there is a, I think the proper wording was some type of like hallucinations, right? To where the same thing would be repeated. Um, you know, and ideally, right? If, if you're not building it out properly based on all laws and compliances, right? It could become a bit repetitive. And we've all maybe been there before where we've used certain um, chat options where you're asking a question, but your question is specific to your situation and they give you the basic answer that doesn't necessarily apply to you, right? And then you just get frustrated and have to wait to the morning to call. Um, very similar, I think, in this type of situation where the chat bots are going to have to be built out based on every company, because even in, the same industry, your company could handle things differently, right? And that doesn't necessarily mean that your company is doing it wrong. It's just what your policies are and how your population ends up being. There could be, of course, those grandfather children that are, you know, within <laughs> within your company that are on a different policy than others. And, you know, as things change, um, your chat is going to have to change. And I think that that's going to be something that is going to have to be kept up with, right? Does your policies change every year? Um, what Chris was alluding to, I want to say it is the state of California right now, although there could be other states, but from what we've seen so far, California is stepping up not only on the EEOC, but also just making sure that if someone is using um, the automation um, in the system, that that is reviewed every year, right? And so I think from, from like a recruiting stance, um, although, you know, we aren't recruiters, but, you know, that does fall in line, especially sometimes within the HR house. 
um, if your company is going to use some type of like automation within the system to detect certain things, um, maybe it's, hey, look, it's reviewing a resume in your job description. And if someone doesn't check these three boxes, it's not going to pass on that resume to your um, recruiter. And, you know, then your recruiter is, you know, already sourcing that's freeing up their time and making sure they're looking at, you know, valid resumes that fit the job description, um, that that is being reviewed, right? So that there aren't any type of discriminations going on um, that are built into the system. Um, and that you are staying in laws and in compliance um, from that perspective. So that there's going to be an annual annual review of that that they're trying to push through too. And those are all good, you know, deciding factors. And not every, look, not every HCM system is jumping on this too, right? So I have heard from some colleagues of mine that there are some HCM systems that are holding off on this for now, um, just due to con the confidentiality, right, of the sensitive data that payroll houses um, that we see, you know, every day. And so, you don't want, you know, just to implement something and have, you know, the system get its wires crossed, right? Or mm -hmm. say if someone asks a question in the, in the chat and it, releases some confidential information, right, unknowingly, right, that's still that human factor that does need to be um, in play. And so some are staying away from it, you know, some are jumping at it, you know, little by little. But I think um, just like everything, there's always a hype. And then, you know, there could always be, you know, a plateau at some point. But I think over the next couple of years, we'll get to a median um, area to where um, it'll, you know, it'll be better suited for everyone. There's something you were talking about a little earlier that I thought was interesting, given our both of our uh, respective industries, is that we're talking about the nuances you were noting um, with chat GPT as a shortcoming. And I think anybody who works in payroll and HR knows, I mean, I call it HR, HR, right? That's an abbreviation. How many abbreviations are there between payroll and HR? How many acronyms do people use and throw in place? That's very challenging to learn, uh, I think. Um, and then the other thing that I, I thought was interesting, I think you were, you were touching on as well, was uh, which, which took me aback because I thought, oh wait, I think ChatGPT is supposed to be in place to to reduce errors, but it also noted as one of its shortcomings accuracy. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. You know, I thought this was going to help, you know, any human error, but it's admitting uh, it may not be as accurate as as thought. So that may, to the point of the company uh, you were talking about, giving pause. They're saying, well, if I have humans doing this job and they can be creative and, and offer other things in addition to chat gpt and chat gpt is admitting it may not be 100 percent accurate maybe i stick with the human role and and have them to carry on for now and just see can this be used in certain specific places you know like it's it's a nail it's not a board maybe it is not the the replacement so um i think both of us when we talk we're thinking along the same lines you know where th there is some caution there is some hesitation and I think some companies that are doing that, it could be it could be a wise move down the road because if if you jump in, you know, you want to get in first a lot of times with business. That's kind of the saying, but also you want to do it right and you want to take care of your shareholders and other folks, depending on the size of your company and your employees as well. So looking at the big picture, uh, maybe taking a step back and waiting could be end up being the wise move in the long run. You know, from my stance to just knowing some of the laws not even all right as, as being in this industry for well over a decade or plus it's just if you try to implement in the chat questions around taxation right that really applies individually based on what someone um, is claiming or the percentage of certain taxes or the locals that could potentially apply every single local sometimes is really different and then not everything changes in the January of that current year, sometimes things change in the middle of the year, like July, and just the, the upkeep of that, right? And how how is your chat going to keep up with all the different compliance changes, especially because the government does not even have it figured out, right? They're trying to figure it out now as everyone's trying to push it through. And so I think those are all great factors is that it, it's openly admitting that, hey, look, at there could be a gap in some way because there are so many layers to payroll and no one, unless you're in this seat or have at least at some point processed a payroll, you really just you know don't even realize that one click of a button could ruin a couple of other things right and you technically wouldn't know that sometimes until you're processing your payroll or paying attention to your register there's a lot that um that could come into play right and so i think from 
from that stance, there's um, there's many different things that you know could occur. So the accuracy is a, is a big um, factor here, and it could definitely be a concern for people. And you know, I think should be um, one. And I'm just glad that people are starting to recognize it, and that there is a good push for um, laws to be in place. In both of our industries, there are third party providers, and we were talking about uh, laws and guidance. And the EEOC, their recent guidance was saying. Like if you're using a third party for AI for your particular system and there could be an issue, a uh, discrimination issue or something to that effect, you, the employer, could be held responsible, not necessarily the third party. And that kind of goes in line with, with both our industries where, you know, ultimately you're the person making the choice. You know, it's on it's on the employer, it's on the business, the organization. In some cases, yes, for payroll, I think for like a CP, uh, CPEO, a certified uh, professional employer organization, I think they could have some liability. But most of the part, you're the one making this choice. So I think it's interesting. The research we we, we did for this particular episode, seeing that there are companies that are saying, you know, maybe let's take a beat. Let's hold off. Let's see what's going to happen. Uh, this isn't to, to put down other companies that are trying to find places. I think EY's uh, payroll chatbot is pretty cool. Uh, and it was answering like 500 questions or something like that rather fast. So I think that's really interesting stuff. But I also think people who, who want to just see where this might go and take a moment. I don't see a wrong in either way. I think it's possible to catch up. I don't think you're going to get too far behind if you decide to, to wait a minute and just see. You might even come up with something more creative and say, okay, you know, these these initial issues we're waiting for the first first wave, so to speak. As you said, you know, sometimes there are plateaus. In the 80s, there was a plateau. I remember reading something about they were working on a self-driving car. And mm -hmm. oh, we're still working on that now. So <laughs> I mean, yeah. maybe that will happen, uh, but maybe there are plateaus. So maybe it's like we could do this. And then all this uh, kind of buzz happens. And then we see from could to what actually will work. Yes, absolutely. And um, look, I think it's a good to point out too that based on EY's article, their team has been working on it for a couple of years, right? And it's still not perfected, but it's definitely there, right? So this, this stuff does absolutely take time. The um, executive at Google, I believe, who um, created, right, AI, who is actually warning people now, and just like everything, someone takes advantage, right? We've seen it in the payroll industry we've seen it in every other industry right where one good thing could come out of something and there's there's always someone that uses it negatively um, and it negatively you know affects many other people and I think that's the worry right now is that it's going so fast laws can't keep up with it at the moment and then you do have people coming into play that are taking advantage of it which you know can be you know an, an unfortunate thing I just think that from my stance, um, separately outside of you know the industry, I mean, I think we all have our fears, we all have our worries, we all have our own you know personal opinions of it. Um, but just like everything from way back in the day when literature was being brought to place, I'm sure as we had books and things moved to eBooks, right? I'm sure that was a worry, especially for libraries that are still here, even outside of um, that perspective. I mean, I remember when internet first came about and I was younger, but you had that loud dial in, right? And then now mm -hmm. we switched over to um, <laughs> Wi-Fi. And I don't even know if I even really realized the transition to Wi-Fi. It was just Wi-Fi was here and it was very, I didn't have the dial in anymore. I'm sure during that time there was some worry. Um, so just like this situation with AI, there definitely, um, there definitely is some validity and being worried about it, right? There's, you know, valid points being made. I think that um, people who are speaking up to kind of take a hold on it and really make sure laws are in place, um, I commend them for that because I think that is very serious. And I think also in our industry, because, you know, losing someone's social, giving out someone's social or compensation and error in some way, um, especially within the workplace when that is very sensitive information, um, could do damage to a company, right? And so I think, yeah. you know, any wrong answer to a question, to a policy, days off, anything of that nature could definitely do some really heavy damage. So it yeah. is ultimately what Chris said. Um, just like the article, it is ultimately on the employer, which means it's ultimately on the human <laughs> to really yeah. make sure things are flowing. <laughs> so just let's just hope that companies are taking the right steps, getting the right people in the room. Your payroll person has to have a seat at the table. Your HR person has to be a part yeah. of those conversations. And we just need to make sure it's done right before the launch goes out. 
Yeah, a hundred percent. And so, something I was looking at this morning, I'm, I'm wondering if uh, I can get your take on it. Uh, I think the article, I'm going to paraphrase, it was like something to the effect of AI versus AI, the next front in fishing wars. So this is something that I think both our industries, people see a lot. Uh, phishing, the BEC, the business uh, email compromise, and other scams that the IRS posts. And it seems like scammers, fraudsters, et cetera, uh, these cyber criminals are starting to use AI. So yeah. I thought that's so bizarre where I thought, okay, do we fight AI with AI and who comes out on top? And it ended up sounding like some future movie we might see this summer. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm sure there's probably a movie already out there. We probably just didn't probably. catch on. I know yeah. I'm realizing that now. I'm like, wait, the movies are saying that. Um, but yeah. yeah, so I'm sure there's already something going on. Um, but yes, I mean, look, I just, I, you know, the scamming activity of, um, the negative AI side of things. I mean, I just, that's also a personal thing for me. Someone needs to definitely get ahead of that, which I think is absolutely happening, but potentially, right? Could AI identify an AI, right? Like you, yeah. humans can identify humans, right? I mean, people say all the time, I'm a great people reader and, you know, I, I can pick up on people's energy. And so I'm sure that um, can play a factor and just making sure we're staying ahead of that. A conference that I saw on YouTube um, with OpenAI's um, CEO, Sam Altman, I mean, he made some really good points when asked certain things along those lines. And he even mentioned that this is a good test on humanity. And I was actually really glad to hear him say that. Just really focusing on, look, like, you know, are, we could be creating something really good, but are we creating something that we don't even realize what we're creating, right? Or something yeah. that does take over more than what we have expected, right? And so maybe maybe it's something that we create and it fails, or maybe it really starts to take over more than we expected. So I think what he he did mention, I can't remember his can't remember his exact um, sentence, but basically it was around the focus on humanity, right? And how that is going to yeah. play a huge factor. And I really, really thought that really caught my attention because that is very true, <laughs> that we need to make sure the human aspect is still there and that we don't forget people. Um, and maybe how we're paid and how our world looks in the next you know, decade or so will be different, but a human is still a human. We're still definitely needed and our ability to, for context purposes, right? To really be able to me mesh in different areas or bring different perspectives to the table. You know, an AI robot is going to be pre-programmed. I'm not sure yet if that AI robot can have a human feel, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not sure. Um, that's for the high, high IT people, but I think for now um, we're, still, we're still leading um, that fight. Yeah, and it, it's interesting. I was testing this out yesterday, slightly off subject. But for some some kind of video teasers that I like to put on uh, LinkedIn from time to time uh, for apparel uh, CPP uh, study group, there's actually a voice uh, you can use, and you can choose different people, and you type in the text, and the voice does not sound like <laughs> robotic. It actually has a nice human-like flow, and it was something else they were talking about as a scam. Scammers are using that where they're trying to replicate a family member's voice or uh, a coworker's voice. And then instead of these emails where you get an email at your office and it's it may look a little sketchy because the CEO asks you for like, uh, could you please give me 100 pay cards or I need the W-2 data for 20 employees. You're like, why would the CEO ask me that? So that's the first red flag. Uh, but this one, it might be an actual voice call and it sounds like the CEO or it sounds like your boss. It sounds like your coworker asking for this data. And to your point about the human role, you know, we have this ability to be skeptical. <laughs> uh, you know, if we have a certain amount of years in a profession and, and we're used to how we're working with each other. And that I think is again, a human role, a human element of digging further, digging deeper. And maybe AI will catch up with that, but I think that's something that tends to be unique about us as humans. Uh, and also with regard to the IRS chasing after the AI fraudsters and scammers, um, as well as the Senate, considering some possible legislation, some states are looking into it, and people are the ones who ultimately write these laws. So there's always a human role, even, you know, I think no matter how far technology goes, there's always a human role, there's always a role for people in there. So absolutely no pun intended right no pun intended there with our podcast the human role <laughs> exactly <laughs> right just it, that is, in. <laughs> it is yeah it's coming back full circle um and yes that is correct i think a couple of other articles um that i read about definitely even 
with like google.com i think there's different fonts and certain o's that can be used so it looks like it's coming from google or it looks like it's coming from gmail but like the a may be in a different font outside of that but to what you alluded to chris i was really good right we have a sixth sense right to where oh really you know why are they asking for this you <laughs> know and i think else, yeah. yeah exactly and there's been enough of those scams so far and a lot of it being talked about of course on the news um and with people being able to get information so quickly now through social media right there's there's a lot of people already being aware that hmm, not so sure about this just yet right so typically if something else like what was kind of occurring with ai and the voiceover scams i think with that that quickly got on the news so then people it may have unfortunately happened to a couple of people that made them worried but then shortly thereafter once it hits the news now everyone is kind of like aware right and so i think that's you know um the good part about you know the vast spread of information well good part i would say sometimes that's negative the vast <laughs> spread of the information but um the, the good part about it is we can when there are actual scams going on it can be notified to people in bulk, right and pretty quickly so yeah those are all good factors my own two cents uh, for, for companies with HR and payroll departments or, or personnel, as we said earlier, have, they have that seat at the table with these particular conversations and more, but with AI in particular and say, you know, what do you see in the world of AI um, currently, uh, this next generation tech, where do you see it fitting in payroll? I mean, uh, where do you see it fitting in HR? Or do you see it fitting in HR? Maybe a company is different and they say, well, at this point, it's not something that I think we're going to work in there. And another company, maybe it's a small business and they're, they're one of the one payroll person is wearing five different hats and they're like, you know what? Oh my goodness, if I could have one of these tools, I'm going to free up so much more time. It's going to reduce um, redundancy and certain errors that may have uh, occurred from time to time. And this is how it can help us. So uh, I heard this a lot at the payroll conference, and I think it's true for both our departments, HR and, and payroll, like get, get them at the uh, a big seat at the table <laughs> because uh, labor tends to be an employer's biggest uh, expense. So managing that is crucial to the success of a business. Yes, agreed. I mean, look, the seat at the table, I think from this stance, if someone doesn't realize how important it is to have payroll at the table, um, I feel bad for you if you're going to go this route because you really need your payroll person, right? We have so much knowledge to share. A lot of times because there have not been a lot of investments in payroll, we've invested in ourselves, right? We've had to research on our own to help put things together to make sure the systems are flowing fine you know it would be very damaged to a company not to include their payroll person at all and i just think from this stance i mean that could be the next level of payroll right let's not handle the manual processes from day to day let's not handle these manual time sheets let's not manually put in you know certain benefits in the system right just make sure that ai is set up to do that and we land more strategic right so i think chris in some of our prior conversations we talked about that that where maybe our roles now will be heavier on the strategy side, right? Heavier on the building outside, heavier making sure that the technology that our employees are utilizing um, are properly responding to answers, right? Which would be how the answers would come from us, right? It would come from the payroll person and HR person in the industries and just keeping up with those updates behind the scenes. But I think, you know, it, it's gonna look different, but I don't necessarily foresee it fully canceling out, you know, our teams at the moment. Yeah, I would agree. I, I think you said this before, uh, when you're talking about dial-up internet and Wi-Fi now, I mean, there are changes um, and changes can be scary, but I don't know if it's the end of a type of industry uh, as a whole, because I think going back to earlier this year, reading articles about investment in payroll software in particular, and that is also takes humans to design, to market, to sell, you know, it's just be changing gradually, I think, uh, even though this is a very trending topic that's kind of bubbling up to the top here. And I think it'll, I think it'll carry on through the summer, but I think this is also a topic we'll probably revisit uh, on our podcast from time to time, maybe later this year, uh, and just see how it shakes out. Absolutely, and um, also to, to the cost um, point, some articles that I was reading, I mean, it has been in the hundred millions, right? That have cost, you know, it's cost some industries that much just to build this out. 
Um, so not saying that that's going to go into play for certain HCM systems, maybe not even from a client perspective, if you're purchasing some of these products, that may not be the cost. But for some of these HCM companies, that could potentially be the cost for them, right? To go through testing, to build a whole team out, to make sure things are working properly. That does all play a factor. Um, the timing it will take for that to get set up. And then of course, from a client side, yes, that could play into what your costs are, what your annual increases are. Um, I don't think from a front end perspective, we will see that hit so heavily. We'll see a different hit, right? So maybe instead of increasing a couple of dollars or so, it might be a little bit larger than that. But I think for some of these heavier ACM platforms to stay ahead, it is going to be costly for them on the back end. So yeah, more to come what Chris mentioned. I mean, this was great conversations. I think from, you know, from my end, there's a neutral stance you know i don't love it i don't hate it you know we're here it is here um you know and that's just the the part that we have to make sure we stay on top of um, i think just from my end research being done and um the it members that i've spoken to there is still definitely going to be a human element to it all um and what that really looks like is still currently being um, figured out but yeah so what chris just said i mean i think now we'll Go ahead and wrap some things up of what Chris mentioned. Um, I'd be interested to talk about this topic again within the next six months or so, since things are changing daily. We'll definitely have a follow-up conversation. Um, we'll do some more research, see if we can get into some more, you know, conferences. Um, but we appreciate, you know, you all listening to us, taking the time out of your day um, to join us for our first episode. Um, we're excited to keep these going and rolling every single um, every single month. And so next month, our topic is going to be employee retention. Um, so as we're in this time where people are getting nervous about what their job even looks like with AI, um, how from an employer stance can you keep your employees happy and what is really important to them, right? So as we see a shift of things becoming more of an, an employee's market, um, we want to just make sure we're enhancing the employer side as well as the employee side too. So that will be our next um, month's topic. And we definitely look forward to bringing more episodes and more insight your way. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Tiana. I think that's a very important topic. And I look forward to us researching and talking more about it because as we said a few times, the human role is very important, particularly in HR and payroll. Yes, and if you enjoyed our conversation, look like, reshare, repost. Um, for now, we'll keep these on um, our LinkedIn site. Definitely um, down the line, we'll be uploading to um, YouTube, but more to come. Thank you all so much for joining us today, and we will see you next month. Take care, everybody. Bye.